Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope everybody's fresh and awake. I had the coffee. My alarm went off at uh, six this morning, um, but I've been playing ping pong, so that really got me going. Uh, my name is Jeroen Smeets, and uh, I've been uh, invited to talk about the theme of humility, um, which, to confess, I had to look up in a dictionary the, the, the actual definition of humility. Um, and what I found out, um, it's the, the quality of being humble. Um, which also immediately got me to the next problem, like how do I talk about my own work while being humble? Like it's, it's a complete contradiction. It's like, to me, a humble person doesn't speak about himself, doesn't speak about the work that he does. He would rather highlight uh, the work of others and um, talk about others and, and putting themselves, not per se in the background, but just keeping a, a quiet role, the quality of being humble. Um, luckily, my work is a lot about being the middleman. Um, I run uh, an art agency, and um, yeah, this is me. <laughs> um, I run an art agency called uh, Your Own, which is an uh, English wordplay on my name, Jeroen, which is unpronounceable in any, any other language than Dutch. Um, so yeah, that's the art agency. I uh, connect the right artists with the right client, and uh, I do a lot of other projects as well, which we'll get into later. Um, I publish a magazine called Ape Magazine, and I run uh, an art project, uh, art travel project called uh, The Jaunt. Um, and, and I'll be talking a little bit about all of that. And hopefully at the end of all this, you'll consider me to be humble so that I won't have to do it here for you. Um, with the, I started the art agency about five, six years ago. And I actually had a temporary gallery space here in Amsterdam on the, the Oude Waal, which uh, some people, including me at the time, considered to be the most beautiful canal of, uh, of Amsterdam. Um, what I do with the art agency is uh, I connect the right artist with the right client, and that can be a commercial brand, um, it can be a gallery space, it could be a magazine, um, it can be anything. And, and what I do differently with the art agency is that we don't represent any artists. We don't work with a, a, a roster of artists where we, the client comes to us and be, is like, I need a, a work to be done. And it's like, oh, I've got 15 people here you can choose from. But instead, I um, keep an open, uh, an open roster where I'm able to work with artists from all over the world. So I can really find the right artist who's maybe in a specific location and, and fits the right style and briefing of the client. Um, and that um, enables me and the artist a, a whole lot of freedom. We don't have to be confined to the regulations of a traditional um, artist agency. Um, and, I, and I like to do more for the artist than just the than just the uh, commercial work. Um, this is a, a photo of an artist uh, called Billy and Alex. Uh, very confusingly is, is uh, actually one girl. Um, and we had an exhibition with her in a, a store in Berlin from uh, Hub Footwear. Um, they had a new space there. They had a, a whole basement which was completely empty and they didn't quite know what to do with it. Um, and I was in touch with them at the time and uh, suggested to have uh, an artist studio space there. So. Billy and Alex was actually able to sit in the studio or in the shop there for a whole month and was able to work as a studio in the store. And uh, we finished off with an exhibition at the time. Um, we do more traditional stuff with our murals uh, at office paintings. Um, this is at the, the Red Bull head office here in, uh, in Amsterdam. Um, and I work together with a lot of other galleries as well. This is a, a gallery called the Art Rebels Gallery in Copenhagen. Um, I'm, I'm actually from Copenhagen. I'm originally Dutch, but living in uh, Copenhagen now for the last three and a half years. Uh, so I've been trying to get my network going over there. Um, and working together with the Art Rebels Gallery was a great way for me to invite artists that I've worked with previously in Amsterdam and other places uh, and invite them along to Copenhagen and, and show their artwork off in uh, Copenhagen. Um, so that it's in really, really short. Uh, the agency and what we do. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I started a project called Ape Magazine, where again, I wanted to give a platform for artists to, to showcase their work. Um, 
So I made a really big magazine. It's uh, 30 by 40 centimeters, and um, I wanted to do, I wanted to give a magazine a new function and, and not just be a magazine that you read probably on the toilet and pass away again, um, but I wanted to give it another function. So um, all of our pages are 30 by 40 centimeter. We invite the artist to make an artwork. We uh, print it full page and uh, there's no staples or anything in the magazine. So you actually really easily can take out all the pages of the magazine and put them up and uh, hang them in a frame uh, and have a new artwork at home. Um, it's a free magazine above all as well. So um, we're able to uh, give a whole new big platform for these artists that previously wouldn't have that platform. They'll actually have art hanging in people's homes. And um, we're doing that right now as well online where we got a, on our Instagram account, we got almost 9,000 followers and we do an artist of the week feature, um, which um, it's, it's two way street. Like for the artist is a great way to, uh, to show their artwork to a new platform. And for me, it's actually a good way. I'm notoriously bad with bookmarks, RSS feeds and everything. Uh, so for me, it's my, my archive of artists that I like and would want to work with in, in the future and sort of like, uh, it's just an open archive for myself that everybody can enjoy. Um, and lastly, the project uh, is called the Jaunt. And the Jaunt is an English word for uh, a short and pleasurable uh, journey or excursion. And what we do, in, um, again, the shortest way possible, we send artists all over the world to find inspiration. Um, we book a ticket for the artist. They spend about five, six uh, days at location um, by just becoming inspired. We don't have any briefing for the artist. They go and travel. Um, they go to a place that they've never been to before and um, they become inspired. They, they do whatever they want to do. They see, see the local um, cafes, the local um, baristas, they go to all the tourist sites or whatever they want to do um, and uh, they come home again. When, once they come home, they make an artwork and the artwork um, we produce as a limited edition screen print um, and of course we sell the artwork. But we only sell the artwork before the trip takes place. So you, when you buy an artwork, you know which artist is going to which location, but you have no clue what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to look like. The artist doesn't know what it's going to look like. Um, so you really become part of the creative process of the artist and you're actually funding the creative process of the artist while they're on their trip. Um, and we just, uh, we just published a book a little while ago. Um, that's, that's this one. Um, we've done about, um, I think we've, yeah, we've done just on 13 trips and two weeks ago a girl came back from uh, Iceland um, and we've been to places like uh, Riga in uh, Latvia, uh, we've been to Los Angeles, um, Seoul in South Korea, uh, we've been really uh, all over the place. Uh, this is an artist called uh, Jordi van der Nieuwendijk, he uh, traveled to uh, Los Angeles um, and he is actually one of the few artists that made a whole itinerary for himself. He had five, six days in Los Angeles uh, and he wanted to get the absolute most out of it. So he wrote down almost hour to hour, like what he was gonna do is like check in at the hotel, like get the rental car, fill up the car with gas, drive here, make sure to be back on time for over there, meeting over here, Disneyland the next day, um, and really hour by hour. Uh, and at the same time, we've had an artist who went to, uh, from New York, uh, an artist called Mike Perry. He traveled um, to uh, Antwerp. Um, and he got off the plane and emailed me. He's like, oh, all right, w what am I doing again? Like, <laughs> what should I be doing? And I was like, I don't know, like whatever you want to do. Uh, we actually, we did, we sent him a whole list along of things he could do in, in Antwerp, like places to see, uh, restaurants to eat at, cafes to drink beer at. Um, and he opted for um, just sitting in cafes all day and he didn't speak with anybody for five, six days, which he loved. He is a very busy guy in, uh, back home in New York in his studio um, and he loved just having the time to sit down in a cafe and not do anything but sketch in a sketchbook. That's, that's what he did for five, six days. Um, so yeah, it really depends on the artist how they want to make their trip um, and uh, we don't have, really have any say in that. Um, we've been to, uh, we sent an artist called Niels uh, Schuh Milman, he's a Dutch graffiti uh, or calligraffiti uh, artist um, who actually just denounced the, the term calligraffiti and is now working in the term uh, abstract vandalism. Um, and this is uh, actually one of the works, this is one of the work that he made for our, uh, our print and it was for him a step away from uh, calligraffiti and, and towards the abstract vandalism. Um, he traveled to Istanbul and saw calligra like calligraphy everywhere, but what he more saw were patterns everywhere. He saw 
Patterson Gates in, in science and everywhere. So he took uh, the patterns that he saw for his inspiration and put that in his artwork. This is, uh, he's working with a broom and he's making a, an octogram, which is an eight pointed star. Um, and this is him in action in Istanbul. He got a, a broom, a bucket and an ink and um, made, his, made his artwork. Um, couple more prints here. Uh, on the left we have uh, Heydoff, um, artist from Breda who traveled to Helsinki. Uh, in the middle is uh, Los Angeles, um, which is one of my favorites because uh, previously we sent a lot of artists on their trips and they put all of their experiences, uh, what they've saw into their trip. And uh, Jordi was one of the first artists who came back. It's like, I, I loved LA and I drew a chair. This, this is my inspiration. I, I found a chair. Like he, he actually said, I was in hotel rooms every night and there's a, there's a chair everywhere. In every hotel room there's a chair. So I, I ended up drawing like chairs everywhere. Um, and, and I love that. <laughs> um, on the right we have an uh, English artist called uh, David Schillinglaw. Um, and um, my girlfriend's family actually has a summer house in Denmark, um, as a lot of Scandinavian people do. Uh, it's a summer house built by uh, her grandparents. Uh, they were architects, so they actually designed and built the house all by themselves. It's got this lovely 70s vibe with orange and green everywhere. Um, and we invited him to come along to the summer house there. And it was the first trip where I was present as well. Um, because if he would have been there alone, it's in the middle of nowhere. So if he would have been there alone, he'd get depressed, lonely, out of food or, or all of the above. It, it's, uh, it's a beautiful place, but you shouldn't spend your time alone there. So we, we went with him, we hosted him there, we had barbecues on the beach, we went swimming every night. And um, this, he, he got inspired by nature. His print is called Look to Nature. And he was so inspired by nature that he usually works very, very illustrative. And now he started working in a more abstract manner. And he, he found that in the nature. And for him, his trip was all like finding confidence in abstract and making sure that he could do that work as well. And that's ultimately what we want, or what I want, want to do with the project. We want to become a, a catalyst for artists who um, don't have the time to do something or the time to explore something, to give them that and give them a, an experience that they don't only, which they cannot only use for the prints, but can use in their whole artistic practice. Um, and, and the trip from David Schilling was very nice because he, like, we joined him there and Usually I don't go along uh, with uh, any of the trips. It's, it's the worst part about the project. I book really expensive tickets for other people to travel. Um, and in this case, it might be the most humble thing about the project. Um, but yeah, it's like that, that's what we do. We send artists all over the world. Um, we're going to send our next artist um, to Switzerland. Um, I contacted him. Um, and sometimes I have an artist in mind and, and a destination in mind and I ask him, would you want to go there? Um, but with this guy, his, his name is Daniel Frost, and I asked him, what, what, what are the top five places in the world you would like to travel to? Um, and he said, uh, everybody, if, if I ask anybody that, they all say Japan. Um, and we haven't been there yet. Um, and, but he also mentioned uh, Switzerland and, and a train ride called the Glacier Express. It's a train ride that takes you from the one mountaintop to the other mountaintop. It takes you eight hours and it's known as uh, the slowest express train in the world. Um, um, yeah, and it's, it's a beautiful ride. Like, you, there's bridges, there's tunnels, there's valleys, there's mountains, there's um, three course menus on the trains. Um, and he's gonna do that in the month, 19th of May, he's gonna take his trip. And um, yeah, that's, that's the John really shortly. And I don't know if I'm at 20 minutes already. I'm, Probably last time I might have talked too fast. You're great. Yeah, all right. Um, I think that that's sort of, yeah, it. In, a, in bullet train speed, in, a, in a hopefully in a humble manner. <laughs> <laughs>